Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has said that the death toll in the devastating earthquakes that shook Turkey and neighboring Syria is now close to 10,000. More than 70 nations have stepped forward to provide help to the victims and expedite search and rescue efforts. The Pontifical Mission Societies in the United States has opened the Earthquake Aid and for Turkey and Syria Fund, and its proceeds will support the missionary priests, nuns, and laypersons who are providing assistance to the quake victims. In a similar manner, the European Continental Synodal Assembly in Prague renewed its closeness to the victims of the tremors and pledged to bring aid to them. On Tuesday, February 7, the Holy Father Pope Francis said on Twitter that he was very close to the people affected by the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. In his message, he said he was praying for those who lost their lives and their families, as well as those undertaking rescue efforts. In quake hit Turkey, survivors of the deadly tremors are facing great hardships, said Vicar Apostolic of Anatolia, Bishop Paolo Bizetti. The prelate, who is also the head of Caritas in the area, said that people are forced to sleep on the streets in freezing conditions, and even those who have a roof over their heads do not have power or potable water. In an interview with Vatican News, the bishop said the catastrophe is far from over and there is indeed a serious emergency. Bishop Bazzati said the poor people are affected the most and they are the ones who pay the highest price. The area struck by the quake is home to thousands of refugees from Syria, Iraq, Iran and Afghanistan. He also said Caritas Turkey is coordinating relief efforts in spite of the logistical difficulties and harsh weather. In what is seen as a major ecclesiastical reform, the Suez Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has decided to celebrate Christmas on December 25, just like the Latin Church from this year onwards. Until last year, they followed the Julian calendar to celebrate the Nativity of the Lord on January 7. The Church Synod has also decided to celebrate Epiphany on January 6th instead of the 19th in the Julian calendar. This reform was decided by the Synod last week. The transition will be gradual in parishes as per the mandate of the local ordinary. The Russian Orthodox Church and other Eastern churches under the Moscow Patriarchate still adhere to the Julian calendar. There are reports that the vast majority of Ukrainian Greek Catholic believers support this decision. However, Easter will be celebrated as per the Julian calendar along with other churches under the Constantinople Patriarchate until both the Catholics and the Orthodox leaders decide on a common date to mark the resurrection of our Lord. In Nicaragua, the persecution of the church by the Sandinista regime is intensifying. In the latest incident, a court has sentenced four Catholic priests to 10 years in jail. They were convicted on Monday, February 6th, after being charged with treason and propagating false news. Apart from the priests, two seminarians were also given a decade in jail for the same charges. The four priests and two seminarians belong to the Diocese of Matagalpa, which is led by Bishop Rolando Alvarez, who was under house arrest until the trial. On February 6, a cameraman working for a Catholic television channel was also given a 10-year sentence. The Nicaraguan Center for Human Rights flayed the convictions, calling them perverse actions of the regime which violate human rights. Rights outfits accuse the regime of targeting church leaders who are critical of the government. In the United States, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt's plan to prohibit gender-affirming care caused the ire of transgenders who staged a protest at the state capitol on Tuesday, February 6. Through several bills, Republican lawmakers in the state are trying to ban gender-affirming care. The bills will penalize parents and gender-affirming health care providers if they provide any medical interventions in that regard. Trans activists carrying placards and banners stormed the House chamber before Monday's State of State address. They argued that their community was under attack in the state. 
On the other hand, Governor Stitt said that the bills were designed to protect young people of the state. There were also Twitter messages calling for insurrection. Meanwhile, one of the sponsors of the bill, Republican Senator Jim Olson, said that performing irreversible procedures on young people can inflict irreparable harm mentally and physically. More than 50 Spanish civil organizations and the San Pablo CEU University Foundation of Spain hosted a conference in Brussels on Wednesday to slam the introduction of abortion in the European Union Charter of Fundamental Rights. Intellectuals and civil leaders from more than 10 European nations will take part in the conference. This conference took place as some EU member nations are calling for the inclusion of the right to abortion in the Charter of Fundamental Rights. At present, abortion can be enshrined as a right by individual states if they put it to vote, while the EU does not have a common policy regarding it. The organizers said that there is a significant segment of European society in various countries that is against including abortion as a right. Still in the U.S., Catholic bishops of the Diocese of Nashville, Knoxville, and Memphis have said that they have set up the Tennessee Catholic Conference, which will be the public policy voice of the Church. It will also be a regular presence before the Tennessee General Assembly and federal, state, and local government officials. When it comes to public policy matters with the General Assembly, the conference will be the voice of the Catholic Church and the dioceses. It will advocate for policies that reflect the gospel values and the social teachings of the Church. The Catholic prelates have chosen Rick Musacchio as the executive director of the conference, and Julie Perry has been appointed the deputy director. The new conference will replace the existing Tennessee Catholic Public Policy Commission, which was established in 1983. U.S. State of Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has declared his plan to expand support for crisis pregnancy centers to $100 million. This was made public during his annual State of the State address on February 6. During his address, the governor said that pro-life is much more than just defending the lives of the unborn. He added that it is not a matter of politics, but a matter of human dignity. Governor Lee also proposed the expansion of Medicaid eligibility for pregnant women and parents by imploring the federal government to cover the cost of diapers for Medicaid beneficiaries and granting additional paid parental leave time for employees of the state. In Tennessee, abortion is illegal during all stages of gestation. The ban was implemented in August 2022. In the Philippines, thousands of pro-lifers are expected to gather in Manila on February 18 to take part in the Walk for Life. It will be the first edition of the event since the outbreak of the pandemic. The walk will be held from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. It will begin at the Welcome Rotonda in Quezon City before proceeding to the University of Santo Tomas Grandstand where there will be an event and Holy Mass. Richmond Daniel Cruz Jr., the president of the Council of the Laity of the Philippines, said, quote, our spirit of upholding life has never wavered during the pandemic, end quote. Cruz also said that they are even more deeply aware of the sanctity of life and work and pray to preserve and keep it safe. Organizers have invited lay people and church groups to take part in the march and celebrate the sanctity of life. The Walk for Life in the Philippines was first held in 2017 and has since been an annual event. On the first day of release of the season finale of the faith-based series The Chosen on February 2nd, it made it to the top 10 in the box office and scored a ninth place overall finish. It also grossed $1.67 million that day. In a post shared on Instagram, the series shared a deadline news report which said that The Chosen topped Avatar The Way of Water. In a statement, director Dallas Jenkins said they did not spend anything on marketing. They did not anticipate such big numbers. Earlier, when the creators of the crowdfunded series said that the last two episodes would premiere in theaters across the United States, 
Tickets were sold out in a blockbusting fashion, and the ticketing website got stalled. This is the largest crowd-funded media initiative, and it has become a sensation across the globe. The series explores the life of Jesus and his disciples. The feast of the presentation of our Lord was a day rejoicing for the church in Hebei province of China, as five new priests were ordained. On February 2nd, Bishop Joseph Sun Jigen ordained the five transitional deacons for the Diocese of Yongnyan in Hebei Province. The ordination mass was concelebrated by more than 130 priests, and it was attended by hundreds of seminarians, nuns, and laypersons. Three of the new priests studied at the Hebei Provincial Seminary, while the other two attended the Shenyang Seminary. On the same day, Bishop Joseph Wang Bingzhang of Shantou Diocese ordained transitional deacon Chen Xinjiang, a priest. However, only 400 persons were allowed to witness the ordination because of the pandemic protocol in place. Despite the oppression of the communist authorities, the church in China is vibrant and there are young vocations to the priesthood and religious life. In Muslim-majority Pakistan, attacks on Christians are counting unabated. Last week, a Muslim man threw acid on a 19-year-old Christian girl after she refused to convert to Islam and enter into a relationship with him. While leaving for work from her residence in Masum Shah colony in the city of Karachi, Sunita Masi suffered an acid attack at the cantonment station. The assailant was her neighbor, Kamran Ala Bax, who fled after the attack. The girl suffered 20% burns as, and is under treatment. Police said they have arrested the culprit and a case has been registered. Young women and underage girls belonging to Christian and Hindu communities are particularly vulnerable in Pakistan as they are abducted, raped, forcibly converted, and forced to marry their abductor. In yet another incident, a 12-year-old Christian girl was abducted and converted to Islam by a Muslim shopkeeper in a village near Faisalabad in the province of Punjab. The girl named Hurab Masi has gone to his shop on December 28 and never returned. When the child's father filed a complaint, the shopkeeper Muhammad Mustafa was arrested and the girl was located in a facility for women who have suffered abuse. Apparently, she had been converted to Islam. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.